Hello guys and girls, Raj here, back with another Kubernetes video. In this video, we are going to learn about both Prometheus and Grafana. Uh, we are going to start with what is Prometheus and then do a demo of Prometheus. And then we are going to jump into Grafana, what is Grafana, why we need Grafana and then do a demo. Uh, especially there are a lot of cryptic IDs with Grafana dashboards. So I'm going to show you how, how can you import those IDs, what those IDs mean and also how can you uh, export your own cool dashboards to Grafana website. Uh, all the timestamps are given in the description so feel free to jump over if you already know Prometheus or if you already know Grafana so you can just jump to the portions you want to listen. Also please subscribe, like and comment in the video if you like the video, if you have any questions etc. Uh, it makes me look like a better YouTuber than I actually am and it actually helps grow the channel. Um, Alright guys and girls let's jump into the video. So Prometheus is a monitoring tool. Monitoring is basically uh, you checking the memory usage, uh, CPU usage, and then if something goes wrong, uh, you create an alert, and then it actually saves the data in a time series uh, database. You can query the data to generate graphs, uh, tables, etc. Uh, you can create alerts, and it is also open source. How does this uh, tool run? So this actually also runs as a daemon. Uh, so like I said before, anytime you hear the name uh, daemon, it basically means uh, within the node, it's basically running uh, within a pod. Uh, so there will be a pod for Prometheus and uh, basically it's gonna send the data to the Prometheus server. But how could you tell? Uh, so after you install a tool and then uh, let's say for this case, I'm running kubectl get all and then we are installing it in the namespace of Prometheus. That's why I'm passing uh, dash n Prometheus and it's gonna show you the pods uh, that it installed. Anytime you install something, you will see in the demo I do that. I always run a kubectl get all uh, to find out what did the command do. Uh, and then if you see the after you install a tool, some pods are running, you can go and describe the pod and it will tell you what node it is running. Uh, so then you know how each tool runs in your cluster. So yeah, pretty straightforward monitoring tool. Uh, so let's do a demo and then uh, things will become more clear. Uh, so in this demo, we are going to install Prometheus and then uh, look at some control plane metrics. For this demo, I'm going to uh, follow the steps uh, written in this uh, documentation. I'm going to give you the link. It's pretty straightforward. We're going to utilize Helm for installing it. That's the easy uh, installation rather than installing a bunch of manifest files separately. So I have a cluster up and running, which I'm going to use for this demo. So before we can install Prometheus, uh, we need to install a metric server. Metric server aggregates your resource usage data in your cluster. Uh, so it doesn't get deployed by default in EKS cluster, uh, but when we do uh, demos for horizontal pod autoscaler or the Kubernetes dashboard, you will see that they also need to access the resource usage, right? That's how autoscaling works. Uh, so even in those demos, we will use metric server. Uh, so let's do that. So I'm just going to run this to uh, commands. Uh, then I'm going to check if everything is uh, up and running. Okay, seems like metric server is ready. Okay, let's deploy Prometheus. Uh, so let's create the Prometheus namespace. Then we are going to deploy Prometheus uh, using the help, help command. So please make sure you guys and girls watch the Helm demo where we show how to install Helm because you do need Helm to install this. Okay, so Prometheus is installed. Okay, now we are going to check that all the parts for Prometheus are up and running. Okay, couple of the containers are in container creating state. Uh, so I'm just going to wait a couple minutes and come back. Okay, seems like all the pods are up and running now. So now what we're going to do is use kubectl uh, to port forward the, to the Prometheus console 
uh, to my local machine. Okay, this should uh, start the forward. Uh, now we are going to open this port in localhost and then we should see the Prometheus console. So I'm just going to click this. Okay, here we go. So this is the Prometheus console. Uh, so just to, just to make sure we understand, uh, you can read the raw control plane metrics using kubectl, uh, but that will be too much to uh, uh, understand, right? So Prometheus uh, gives you the control plane metrics in, in a much simplified and understandable way. Okay, let's take a look at a... Uh, sample metrics. So it comes with a bunch of uh, metrics that you can use. Uh, how about container memory usage bytes? Okay, container memory usage bytes. I'm just going to select this and then click execute. Okay, so you can see the raw data uh, or you can click graph and it's going to show you the graphs. So it's going to show for different targets and different processes. Uh, how much memory it is using. Uh, so these are all control plane components. Uh, note that uh, Prometheus is not going to show you your application uh, level metrics, right? Because this is monitoring the control plane. Uh, for application, uh, we have different monitoring that we are going to go over in separate lectures. You can also select different targets by clicking the status and then targets. So there it shows what are the endpoints that it is uh, showing the metrics for. Uh, so you can come here and change stuff. Okay, let's uh, run another uh, metrics. How about API server request count? Click execute. Okay, here we go. And here is the raw data. And then you can hover over and it's gonna show the details. So if you're an application developer or you work in the application, so generally you don't worry about this control plan metrics. Uh, the admins who uh, manage the EKS cluster, uh, they monitor this and they can create alerts and stuff. What happens is, so this, this gives you some data and gives you some graph, but it is not uh, presentable to senior management. Uh, so what most enterprises do is they will run Grafana on top of Prometheus. So, okay, so with that being said, uh, let's jump into Grafana and uh, see how it works with Prometheus. So Prometheus has all the data. Uh, remember the time series database uh, where we ran the uh, query, the Prome Prometheus query language or PromQL. Uh, so Grafana is just a visualization layer on top of the data. Uh, so it visualizes the metrics, uh, works out of the box with Prometheus. You can create alerts. And it's open source, and the, I mean, you can live without Grafana, but Grafana just makes your dashboards look prettier, and it comes with a, a set of inbuilt dashboards for Prometheus. So if you are running a cluster in your enterprise, and it's a big release day, and uh, I don't know, your director or vice president walks in, and he or she wants to see how things are going, uh, if you show them the Prometheus graph, they won't be that impressed. <laughs> But if you show them Grafana graphs, it looks kind of shiny and uh, more uh, eye-catching and more functional. Uh, so let's do a demo and then you will see uh, what I mean. So I have given all the steps in this uh, install grafana.txt uh, and then I'm going to provide this file with the lecture as well. So you can just copy paste and do it. Uh, so first step is install Grafana. Again, uh, we are going to use Helm. Uh, for installing Grafana, so please make sure uh, you have Helm installed in your machine. Okay, so let's run this. Now we are going to check if Grafana is deployed properly. Basically, uh, all the pods and everything should be up and running. Nothing should be in pen pending or container creating state. Uh, so let's check it out. Okay, so uh, not everything is up and running, so we can see the pod. Uh, it is zero by one, even though it's running. So it takes a few more seconds. It should be one by one, like everything should be ready. So we're gonna give this few more seconds and then come back and rerun the command. Okay, so we rerun the command and now it seems like things are ready. You can see uh, ready one by one of one. Uh, so everything is ready. Deployment is also ready. Uh, one by one ready and then the 
Replica sets are also desired color and radial one. So at this point, uh, we have the elastic load balancer, we have the URL. So you can either uh, run this command uh, or you can just copy paste from this external IP. Uh, but okay, we're gonna just follow the commands and then you run an echo and you add HTTP in front of it. Okay, so we are gonna copy this and then uh, for logging in, you have to use the username admin and then get the password by running the following. Uh, so we're just gonna run this and get the password. Okay, so this is the password. Uh, so let's copy this and open up a link. Okay, I'm gonna control click. You can either copy and open up in your browser. Uh, I'm working in Visual Studio Code, so I'm just gonna control click. Okay, so it opened up the Grafana dashboard. Uh, so the username is admin and password. I'm just going to copy this and paste it here. Okay, we are logged in to Grafana. Okay, so let's just uh, create a dashboard uh, with some charts. So create a dashboard, just hover your mouse to the plus symbol on the top left and then select import. Okay, so this part is a little tricky. Uh, so enter 3119, okay, and then click load. Okay, see this, that 3119 points to the Kubernetes cluster monitoring uh, via Prometheus. So we'll learn in a couple minutes uh, how to search for different dashboards and import using the dashboard number. Like for example, this dashboard has the number 3119. Okay, and then we have to select a Prometheus data source. Uh, so you can just select Prometheus and then click import. All right, so we are in. Um, so just to reiterate, right, all the installation that we did, if we go back to Visual Studio, it's in the same cluster as Prometheus. So it knows which Prometheus to uh, read the data from, right? Because uh, it's in the same cluster where we installed Prometheus and then we installed uh, Grafana. So internally Grafana can talk to Prometheus in this cluster. So this is the default uh, view. Uh, so it's a network input output, uh, cluster memory usage, cluster CPU usage, uh, cluster file system usage, and some of the other stats, the pod CPU usage, uh, container CPU usage, Okay, so what I did next was I created this kubectl uh, deployment for the Nginx deployment with rolling. This is one of the files. You can use any deployment uh, just to show you guys and girls. Uh, and then after a few seconds, you can see uh, we deployed this uh, test deploy deployment. Uh, it has three uh, pods that's running and then uh, one replica set managing those three pods. So now what I'm gonna do is go back to the Grafana dashboard and then uh, refresh, or you can wait 10 seconds, uh, but patience is not my virtue. So I'm just gonna refresh and then it should start showing uh, the CPU and container uh, usage uh, for those uh, pods that we just deployed. Okay, so here we go, see test deploy. So these are the pods that we did. Oops, uh, let me scroll down, test deploy. Uh, so I'm not invoking it, so everything is zero, uh, but at least you can see that uh, you can see the name. So if I go to pods, uh, so these are the containers, so you can see it's Nginx. Um, okay, so this is pretty uh, nice, right? You can see this is much prettier than the Prometheus metrics, uh, and all this is given uh, out of the box. Okay, so I know what you guys and girls are thinking. Uh, what's up with those <laughs> random, IDs uh, for the graphs, right? And how how you know? So I've given a link uh, in my uh, document. So let me open this and then I'll show it to you. So basically, all the dashboards Grafana is open source. So all the dashboards are built by community. Uh, so this is the page, and in my link, uh, see the data source I have selected as Prometheus uh, because Grafana is supports a lot of other stuff as well. And then I always uh, sort it by number of reviews. You can do by average rating as well, it's totally up to you. And then uh, you can select from these dashboards. I have to be honest though, there are like tons of dashboards because it's open source. Uh, so uh, like you have to uh, 
uh, sometimes find out what dashboard you want. Uh, but yeah, I come here and browse. So let's say this uh, Kubernetes cluster, uh, there have been like 157,000 downloads. So I assume it's good because a lot of people are using it. Uh, so you click this and then you should see this ID 7249, right? So let's do this. So let's copy this 7249, uh, go back to our Grafana dashboard. Okay, now go back to this plus sign, click import, and then paste your ID here, click load, and then you can rename, uh, rename the dashboard a unique identifier, you click change, and then you should generate a unique identifier, and from the drop down, select data source Prometheus, click import. Boom, you are done. So this dashboard shows uh, like the current connections, uh, minimum space, minimum memory, all this stuff. And the cool thing is you can actually edit some of this stuff. Like if you click this drop down and you can remove this. Okay, let's remove minimum memory. Sure, okay. So you can remove this and then you can move around stuff like see you want it by minimum space. So see how you can move around. Uh, so it's pretty neat. Uh, this dashboard is kind of cool actually. See, it shows top five memory intense pods. Um, so it shows the top five pods which are using most amount of memory, uh, disk IOs, okay? That's, I guess that's why this one is so popular. And you can save this dashboard for future use. So you click this floppy disk icon. I don't know how many of you know what a floppy disk is. It shows how old I am, <laughs> but click this save dashboard icon and then you can say KTS uh, cluster dashboard, something like that, okay? And then click save. And now this is saved. So now you can go and import other dashboards. Uh, and then if you click home from this, you click home and you can see all the recently viewed dashboards. Um, and then here you can make a dashboard favorite. Like you can make click the star icon. And then if you click it again, it's gonna show you the dashboard again. And you can see uh, that our modification is still in there, it's saved. And then let's say you create some cool dashboard here uh, and then you want to share it. So you can click the share dashboard and then uh, after you have to fill up some stuff and then it's gonna come to uh, this list, right? So that's why, see how easy it is to uh, export a dashboard. Uh, so that's why there are so many dashboards. Uh, I don't know how many, like 16 pages. Okay, so uh, this is how you create uh, dashboards in Grafana. Uh, pretty neat, I really like Grafana a lot because Grafana is not just for Prometheus, it supports a lot of other, uh, other systems as well. All right, guys and girls, so that's how you install and create uh, Grafana and Prometheus. And remember, again, uh, to work with uh, Kubernetes and EKS, you need to install Prometheus before you can uh, install Grafana. So there is one more thing I want to show you guys and girls, uh, how to uninstall Prometheus and Grafana. Pretty straightforward, you just do Helm uninstall uh, like any other Helm uninstall. So I'm gonna run this and then that should uh, uninstall Prometheus and Grafana. All right, they're uninstalled. Uh, but again, they're open source, so no harm keeping them running. You are not going to pay anything for them. All right, guys and girls, that's the video. Hopefully, you guys and girls found it helpful. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.